An important delegation from the People's Republic of China is about to arrive on this platform. Seven members of the Nanjing Acrobatic Troop are coming to teach a bunch of Australian acrobats. In fact, it's the first time that China has made such a cultural gesture to any Western country. But I just wonder if these highly disciplined Chinese professionals have any idea of what they're letting themselves in for. This scene is the start of an extraordinary adventure and everything about it is unusual. Firstly, the location, the Australian Provincial Centre, Albury Wodonga, which straddles the River Murray and therefore belongs to both New South Wales and Victoria. Secondly, the fact that Albury Wodonga has stolen a march on the big cities and developed a troupe of youthful amateur acrobats who are the most entertaining in the country. They're called the Flying Fruit Flies and their graduates are known as the Leapers. But most unusual is the adventure itself. These young amateur performers, along with another non-traditional group known as Circus Oz and others, are facing three months of challenge. A challenge which will test their bodies, their minds, their emotions, even their basic cultural attitudes. The Australians had shown an attitude of fun and friendship, but there was apprehension about the Chinese approach to discipline and to relationships. Right. I think you should be conscious that the Chinese are less overt in the expression of their emotions than we tend to be, and it would not be good form to go up and, and uh, hug the girls. I mean, for the boys to hug the girls or the girls to hug the boys. Within the same sex, it's quite normal and acceptable. Um, we tend to greet someone with a, you know, by implanting a big kiss on the cheek. That is not the way to start the morning. Down as far as you can get. The Chinese insisted on starting immediately. Bags were scarcely unpacked before they were underway at the Wodonga Stadium. Acrobats in Australia are largely self-taught. Circus Oz, for example, has won its reputation more from the novelty and exuberance of its performances than from their skill as acrobats. On the first day, as Robin Laurie led the warm-up, the apprehension was bordering on anxiety. And it should be really hurting on your inner thighs. <laughs> People were a bit concerned about the seven o'clock start in the morning and then an eight-hour day because my, being theatre people mostly we start work at least at 10 in the morning and you now start till two and three in the morning so i don't know what's going to happen about that but people are going to have to actually discipline themselves in a way that we've never had to do before and uh, it's like you have to actually devote yourself totally to this particular project and that's all you'll be doing for those three months there really won't be any time to do anything else at all It was now time to let the Chinese know what they had let themselves in for. The Chinese were too polite to comment but from the proud historical traditions of Nanjing to the kids of Albury-Wodonga, well, that certainly could have appeared to be a great leap 
backwards. <laughs> but then one of the leapers broke through with a burst of talent and the relief was immediately evident. But the Chinese were still worried about the fundamentals. Well, at the first meeting we had to go over who actually were the participants in the project. They were very shocked that there were so many people and it was the first time I've actually seen Mr Lu with a worried look upon his face. And uh, they, because in China, he said, mostly they work with uh, one student to two pupils and here they'll be working with one, no, one teacher to two pupils. And here they'll be working with uh, one teacher to about eight or nine students. Yeah. Mr Lu presented a list of teachers' responsibilities and students' responsibilities during the actual teaching program. The teachers, uh, no drinking, no joking, no smoking during teaching times. Um, students have to uh, eliminate cowardice and uh, they've got to be not afraid of hardship and not afraid of falling over. So they're taking their responsibility to get us rather bumbling Australians up to an extremely high standard in a very short period of time. They're taking that terribly seriously. Uh, in the ancient time, the requirements for the handstand against the wall should last for three or four hours. <laughs> Uh, no, at As the reality of the training began to sink in, the smiles began to vanish. They were now stuck in this stadium for 12 weeks of oriental pushing and pressure. It was now eight hours a day, six days a week of physical punishment. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, Many of the older acrobats had not started tumbling until their 20s and were concerned about just how far their bodies could be stretched. The answer was always the same, a little bit more. Oh, it's the end of the first oh. day, and we're out of wrecks, and I don't think we'll ever be able to move again. Come on, Robin, you have to stand up for I one know, more I'm minute. I'm going to take them shopping now. <laughs> I was stand stiff up. at lunchtime. I went back to the office at lunchtime, and I got out of the car, and I was stiff. Were, Were you not, like that? Yes, I was numb at lunchtime. I, in fact, lost all sensation in my hands, so the pain yeah. went away. It it's wonderful. extraordinary, though. You know, they say, you think about being an acrobat, and then you come in here and you do this first day's training and you think, heavens, this is what being a real acrobat, acrobat is. is about, yeah. Yeah. It's just extraordinary, eight solid hours of pushing and being pushed and just torturing yourself yeah. physically. Yeah. It's really... <laughs> Standing on your hands for mm. as long as you can. 
um, which means standing on your hands and having a clock timing you and, you know, trying to stay up for a minute, a minute and a half, push through to two minutes, you know, it's and ignore the pain. And every muscle in your body is just screaming and you want to stop and you think, no, they're so nice and they're so keen and they've for come us to from do well. China and they come and from China and we'll try really hard. And we're unworthy <laughs> students. <laughs> You're terrified that the Chinese are going to pick you to demonstrate with because oh, yeah. they, when they push, I mean, they really push and they know how to push so that you so. can't stop them. And it just keeps going, you know, right down toward their, the floor. Their training must be amazing because one of them said that after they've done handstand, after they used to do handstand training, yeah. th sometimes they would do it for so long that they were unable to hold their chopsticks to eat. Mm. Their, their fingers would be numb. I mean, Jenny's hand had gone numb mm. and she was a bit worried. They said, oh, normal, normal. normal. Yeah. <laughs> and then it started to go up her arm, oh, normal, <laughs> normal. <laughs> The flying fruit flies evolved out of a youth project in Albury Wodonga five years ago. They have already tasted success being a smash hit at the International Youth Festival in Vancouver. The oldest members are 17 and the youngest is Kimberly, who today is celebrating her eighth birthday. <laughs> Until now, their training has been directed by Mickey Ashton, one of the stars of the famous Ashton Family Circus. Mickey just happened to park his caravan in Albury one day, and he stumbled across the fruit flies. He stayed, and today they're the centre of his life. This one, I could back against any kid in the world. She can do a 30 to 53 somersaults. Never been proven, nobody worries about it. Good night, mate. But she's the one that can beat any Guinness Book of Records if I try her out. And she's gone halfway through it. I don't push these kids because um, there's no reason to. But you this, put the finger on grip you, you, you and you hit here. here. And, you then, and you put the foot here and then this way. Yeah. Then you cannot slip. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Despite his pride in the children, it was difficult for Mickey to see his best performers taken away for the whole of the summer. Mm. It left him in two minds yes. about the Chinese acrobatic tradition. Uh -huh. We should learn from each other. Big pardon? You, we should learn from each other. Oh, six generations. <laughs> six generations. Uh, he decided he knew that. Circus family, this country. Uh, 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 Prince. Uh, Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R. L E Y. This is Fiona. F I O N O N I. Hey. Try it, sweetheart. You, the midget. Try it. Three. Yeah. Can I see some farming manuals? <laughs> Have you any records of, re of revolutionary songs? Have you got records of Mongolian songs? I need a manicure. <laughs> Tibetan songs. Right. Be wilder. Thanks, right. I'm for performers who love acting and mime, breaking through the language barrier was an entertainment in itself and helped create the first bonds of friendship. Yes. Yeah. Regular training, it should be a, 
uh, spend much more time in both the le uh, right legs and the uh, left leg. Toshov. The origins of Chinese acrobatics stretch back more than 2,000 years. Games of physical strength had evolved into military sports encouraged by feudal lords, and these were refined into entertainments for distinguished visitors. By the time the Nanjing acrobatic troupe was founded in the 1950s, these traditions had almost died out. But a new generation of skilled professionals was developed, and now there are 10,000 acrobats working in China. The first month's training was as rewarding as it was tough, and the improvement in standards was more than matched by the growth in friendship. Ready? Go! <laughs> the early warnings about showing affection were ignored, and even the language barrier was dismissed lightly. Can they go like that or like that? And, and um, see, we've got this, um, I can't say the word really good, uh, interpreter, I think, and she's a lady named Mrs. Lee. And if we don't understand the word they're saying, we go over to her, she tells me, well, we got the word of our, out of us, and we say, like, um, Niha. And um, we ask her what Niha means. And Niha, she says, Niha means, how do you, good morning. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Well, lots of things have been happening since you were here last. Uh, as you can see, people have decided, chosen one or two special subjects and they're actually concentrating very hard on one or two skills. We only do basic training for an hour in the morning. Uh, and after we've done that hour, then people decide how they're actually going to break their day up. And they start practicing their special subject skill. After you try something for about a week, and you could monitor your own progress in that week, you could realise how long it would take to master it to the level the Chinese are at. I mean, from the beginning, Mr Liu kept saying, oh, three months is a very short time, and you'd go, oh, yes, yeah, three months, yeah, you know, we we'll can do, do this in three months, we'll be OK. <laughs> but, I mean, I've been running a plate 
from one arm along my, along my shoulders and I, I still, after five weeks, I only get it 40% of the time. And I do, I do get it now, but I only get it 40% of the time and maybe by the end of three months I will actually be able to do that. But Mr Yang does it and you think, oh, it'll be a snap, you know. <laughs> and then they, you know, they do require an enormous amount of practice. The Chinese were placed in two housing commission houses in the back blocks of Wodonga, but any cultural shock was softened by their own cooking and their constant hospitality. Was he the first in his family to become an acrobat? And uh, Miss Louis said he is the first people to learn acrobat in his family. Ah. Really? What about your children? And uh, Miss Lou has two daughters. Both of them in the school. In our country, the standard is very high. Uh, in China, the uh, political status of the artist is rather high. Mr. Zhu and Miss Chen was mm. picked to go mm. into the acrobatic class. Mm. Mm. Did they have to go there? Yeah. 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 Yes, first of all, they should ask the opinions whether he like it. Whether they like it, if they like it. Do they like it? Uh, mm. Mm. Uh, they like it. <laughs> <laughs>
Get behind my back. Okay. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't get the pins to meet behind my back. They keep missing each other. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the other thing that people have talked about a lot, that it is a lot of brain training, in a way, in terms of persistence, determination and patience. Because you reach this point where you think, oh, if I see this plate again, I'm going to stomp it into the ground, you know. But, and then you just think persistence, patience, and you just keep on going and force yourself to actually go, go through that. And it's also, I mean, it's because you want to please them too. They're fantastic teachers and you really have a sense of that they have this deep concern about every individual's progress. And so there's this sense that if you gave up, they'd be really disappointed. You know? So you force yourself to do these absurd things. I mean, sometimes I look at my life I spend from seven in the morning till four in the afternoon running plates along my arms, spinning balls on my fingers, stretching my legs while I'm in agony. And I think, what a peculiar thing to be doing, you know, it's so strange, it really is. Circus Oz in particular had looked forward to the Chinese unlocking the secrets to specific acrobatic acts. Don't swing! In the past, they'd seen pictures of acts they wanted to try but couldn't work out how they were done. One of the keys lay in the equipment the Chinese had brought to the Australians as a gift. It was just like Christmas. I mean, unwrapping the, um, all the containers and the Chinese were terribly excited and very proud. And for us, I mean, most of us have just never seen equipment like this before. And we were overwhelmed with, I mean, the fact that it was all shiny and brand new and chrome plated and lots of tinsel and red velvet. It was really beautiful. And the other thing is all the equipment is so well designed and they know how to use it so well that tricks that we have been trying to perfect for quite some time in Australia are becoming much more easy and much mm. more attainable. Like the bike that we're using to learn the group bike act here. I mean, everywhere you just need to put your foot to do a trick. There's a little platform all ready for you. You know, it's like they've evolved over centuries and so are really perfect bits of equipment. Yeah. The teeter board was quite scary. The first boy he went up, who's now just does it, you know, in his sleep practically. But uh, the first time he went up, uh, he got an incredible shock because he was, you know, shot up 20 feet in the air. Ready? Up! How does he get down? <laughs> How does he get down? Huh? Mr. Shah! Mr. Shah! Hi there! <laughs> okay, Shah, baby, push the button. I'm up, I'm up. You push the button. Okay. Push the button. And I'm falling. Chinese! Everyone say Chinese. Hello! The Chinese attitude towards the equipment they had brought was one of reverence. They had paid a very high price for it. A well-loved member of the Nanjing Troop was killed in a motorcycle accident while organising it, and they felt his loss very keenly. In China, it's illegal to perform without these safety ropes or wires. The enjoyment of acrobatics is seen more as an art form than as a dangerous spectacle and the acrobats themselves are regarded as treasures of the state. Mr. Liu Yi had confessed privately that his main concern was the possibility of an accident. Inevitably, an accident occurred. 
Natalie fell heavily from her partner's shoulders. The accident happened is because Donna, she jumped and her leg is kicked at this way. So pushing you, and Scott down there cannot support. I thought the force coming out, so he moved, moved that and you fall. That's the, the, the accident happened. So you must know how it happened and make precaution next time. Yeah. Right? Sam is an Albury Wodonga local. He owns a Chinese restaurant and he's the volunteer interpreter. They still take part of the responsibility is that Mr. Liu cannot catch you at that moment. They discovered later that Natalie had broken two ribs. <laughs> The Chinese were in the strange situation of being in Australia, but seeing almost none of it. They had arrived at Melbourne, but seen little more than the airport and the railway station. Finally, they got their chance at the great Australian outdoors, a barbecue at the Hume Weir. And added to this overdose of Aussie culture was the challenge of adapting their skills to some modern day water sports. Friends. <laughs> I she friends. <laughs> We're friends in other words. Oh hang on. Hang on. Oh no, not you. <laughs> By now, both sides were facing the final challenge, a series of performances in Albury which would invite public judgment on the success of this unique experiment. It has been decided that the show will be called The Great Leap Forward. Today, the atmosphere at the stadium is suddenly very different. Uh, it's, apart from the occasional burst of applause, it's generally pretty quiet. There's a good deal of apprehension and tension because today all the new skills are on trial. This is the first time that each act has been paraded alone. 
And with the final performances just three weeks away, nobody wants to make a mistake. Oh! <laughs> sort of cultural interaction with them as interesting as the actual training program. They find it very hard to understand how acrobatics works in Australia because they come from a system where their companies are big, they're 110 people, they're funded totally by the government, they're looked after, their, their safety and their health are looked after when they're old, they've got no worries about what they're going to be doing. Whereas for us, um, it's a totally different sort of kettle of fish and if you're a 50 year old acrobat with rheumatism, you know, you're looking at a very different sort of future than, than they are. Are the kids yeah, that much better? Oh, enormously better. It's just extraordinary. I mean, we lose sight of it a bit ourselves because we come in here every day and you just get used to what it's like, you know. But then friends come up and see you and they go, oh, this is extraordinary, it's exciting, it's so fantastic. And you look around and think, oh, well, there they are on the teeterboard, and they're, you know, doing all that stuff. But, yeah, yeah, I think they've improved amazingly. Together, Mr. Yang. was a sellout. But on stage, the significance was far greater than that. This was the result. The result of a unique experiment. The result of a great effort on both sides. And it was simply outstanding. It was also the last time the Chinese masters and their Australian protégés would ever work together. And on the final night, that thought dominated their emotions.
presents The Far Country over two superb nights, Wednesday and Thursday, on 7.